Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and here pre-soaking, you can't even really see the yarn we're going to be dyeing today. Today we are going to dye some shadow lace weight yarn with a soft, speckly kind of colorway using one color. Shadow lace is 100% merino wool, and it's a yarn base I really like. When Back when I was making a lot of lace and beaded lace shawls, oh the time pre-kids, whew, I use this yarn base a lot and so I've knit with it a lot but I haven't dyed it very many times. I've had this non-superwash yarn pre-soaking for a couple of hours. It's also pre-soaking with some Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn that I am not using for this video. It's pre-soaking for another video but Everything has just pre-soaked in some plain tap water. And now I'm over here with my full-size catering steam pan, and I am carefully removing the yarn from the pre-soak, and just as carefully bringing it over into the steam pan. Uh, I've got a little bit of some wool. Okay. Now, if you would like to learn more about the yarn, the pan, or other tools and equipment I'm using in my video today, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description, and I might earn a commission if you make purchases through any of those links. Now, I'm going to come over and I'm going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar, and I want to add enough water to cover the yarn. Uh, in this container, I have eight cups but we'll see how much we really want. I do want to spread out the yarn as much as I can. Uh, I'm not expecting speckles to sort of strike very quickly at all, but we will be using uh, some acid dyes that are mixed with citric acid powder already. So that will give us a little bit more chance that things can strike, but it looks like I've added about five cups of water so far. And our acid concentration is only going to increase, which means our pH will get lower and lower as we add dye. So I'm not worried about that. For our dye today, we have some electric violet from Dharma, from Dharma Training Company, mixed with citric acid powder. And I believe the ratio that I used was two tablespoons of citric acid plus one half teaspoon of the electric violet acid dye. So that was a lot of dye that I had mixed up uh, because I wanted to make sure I had plenty ready to go for another project. So we're gonna leave that none of that behind today as we go and add it onto this yarn. And I'm gonna turn on the heat. We're across two gas burners on my stove. Now the thing that's gonna give us hopefully a soft speckled colorway is I'm going to come and speckle the dye on here. But because we have so much water in here, the color should give us a speckle, but also spread, giving us a softer purple on the bottom. And so I'm hoping that we will have sort of a, some subtle purple speckles on a pale purple tonal base. Because I could have gone and just dyed the base a pastel purple to start with, and maybe, depending on how the speckles go, we'll decide to kettle dye it and over dye it with some purple uh, in the end. But I think that we can take advantage of the potential spread we might see here today. And I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm gonna let this heat up, but I'm gonna try to reduce the heat when I notice a little bit of movement because I don't wanna add agitation onto this fiber. Too much movement bringing it down to low even before I turn off the uh, the timer or whoops turn on my light but I wanted to show you uh, that I did let the bubbles get there before turning everything off and well I'm gonna reset the white balance now <laughs> oh I guess we're pretty good all right I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask safety glasses and gloves and we're gonna start speckling I probably could have transferred the dye Oof, look at that pretty purple, into some kind of salt shaker or something, but I didn't uh, because we'll go old fashioned and pinch up, that's a lot of dye, but some of the dye with my fingertips and slowly let it fall. And we may as well start zoomed in. 
and I'm just going to let this dye fall onto the yarn. And you can see that the specks look sharp at first and then they do spread out uh, because they're not striking that quickly. And the reason why they're not striking that quickly is because this is non-superwash yarn. Uh, they are striking super slow. They're spreading out a lot. The amount of twist in the yarn can also make a difference here if you're ever curious. But how this behaves on the yarn will determine how heavy or light we go. And I will say that it is a little steamy and I'm noticing some of the steam is sticking making the dye stick to my gloves a little bit. But it's okay if, yeah, see over there, some of the powders are sort of starting to clump a little bit, which might give us slightly bigger specks. But that is okay. And I can pass over where we've gone already and add more, but I will admit that these speckles are even softer than I originally anticipated. So it might end up being super, super, super subtle. But I'm gonna go set this down. And I don't have a yarn lump with me today, so I took my gloved fingers and I sort of wiped it into this little container, which I'll keep on hand should we want it. But now I'm gonna have to think a little bit. Because what we're having here, and actually I'll set a timer for five minutes. What we have here is a little bit of what I wanted. I wanted soft speckles on a pastel background. But I don't want the background to really remain white. I do want to bring in more lavender. But each of these speckles isn't that deep color-wise. And so it's possible that as we go, those speckles might get deeper and deeper. Uh, as we have more acid, but it also might not. We might have something that is this soft. So we'll see as we build up the color how much contrast we have between the speckles and the background color in the end. But anyway, I'm going to let this sit five minutes and then we'll come back to move the yarn around. I can't, honestly can't remember if I've tried speckling on this base before. Oof, but great. We're seeing good spread down below. We may end up getting something that feels a lot more mottled versus speckled. But I am, you'll notice I am moving our warm yarn, but I'm trying to do it carefully without rubbing a ton so that way we do not felt it. Now, I believe that I started to say, and honestly, I can't remember if I did, but I can't remember if I've tried doing something like this on this yarn base before. Uh, my memory is eluding me because one reason why I wanted to speckle onto this lace weight yarn is because that's not the expected thing to do. Uh, because... I mean, if you're doing something lace weight, you want something with low contrast because you want the stitches to shine through, right? And so doing this on this yarn base is not necessarily what you might want to do. But if we need to, we can always adjust. However, I'm also anticipating that I might be doing enough layers of color that these speckles are going to become fairly subtle. At least that is my plan. <laughs> but again, we'll see how things turn out. Now, some non-superwash yarn might speckle really, really well. What it comes down to is the twist is actually a really important factor. Because if there's low twist, uh, there is more space for the dyes to sort of spread out throughout the yarn. And if there's higher twist, there's a little bit more resist. So it could be easy to get something sharp. Of course, we also have a lot of water here, which gives our colors space to spread. Uh, 
And so that is just also something that to think about. And again, I'm going to go rinse off my fingers. We can hold on to that extra color if we think we need to in the end, add more color onto our yarn. Or also use it for another Leave No Die Behind project. But I do think I want to wait five minutes between flips just to give some time for the speckles to set a little bit. I also want to point out we do have a little bit of color breaking. Uh, there are going to be a couple of pink specks in here throughout the mostly purple landscape. But you can see that we're getting some spread around some of those speckles. And we're also getting some larger sort of patches as well. But ultimately this all works and the more dye we add, the more spread, the more subtle these speckles will end up feeling in the yarn. But I'm also okay with that. I just sort of wanted to see what would happen here. After five minutes, I carefully flipped the yarn again, trying to expose areas of the yarn that had fewer speckles, that had larger, either more solid pastel patches or white patches to continue layering on this dye. And I have a fair amount of dye here. So we could keep layering and layering pretty much as much as we want. Now, often when I do speckling on 100 grams of yarn in a pan, it doesn't take very long for me to get coverage that I'm happy with. But the thinner the yarn, the more surface area is present. And so it's a lot easier to get coverage on a bulky yarn that has fewer strands than it is to get coverage on fingering or lace weight yarn like we have here today. And so that might be why I might need to do a few more flips and a few more rounds of speckling because sometimes colors, and I think this time some of these speckles might go all the way through the strand uh, just because they're spreading more, but sometimes the speckles are on the yarn pretty sharply, you might have them on one side of a yarn strand versus the other. And so sometimes when you flip, you don't see them at all. And so that is also a consideration. And I'm honestly very curious if this is gonna feel speckled in the end or not, because I have a feeling that these speckles are so soft that as I build up the color, the background color might become pretty close to them. So we might lose it and we might end up with just a tonal purple, which will also be okay, but I'm just gonna push it and keep layering until I get something that feels not just white and purple. I want it to feel purple and purple. So we'll see where we end up. At this point, I think if I go too much further, I might lose some of the speckly that we have. But I do have this dye that I wiped off my gloved fingertips. And I have this water. I'm gonna add the dye to this water. And then carefully layer this color on. Now the dye bath is not very warm and that is going to just sort of reduce some of that contrast a tiny bit. And we do still have some speckles in here and I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh, because I don't want to reduce that, but I am going to increase the heat a little bit because the water, it's warm, it's not hot, especially adding that other liquid. And I'm now going to also wait 30 minutes from now, so that way we can set this color. But ooh, we match my gloves really nicely. This is definitely soft, and I'm going to turn off the heat, which has been on low this whole time. But I'm now going to carefully remove the yarn and I'm going to gently wrap it around. I'm not trying to wring it, but I do want to remove a little bit of that water volume. And I'm going to set this yarn aside to cool off. I want it to cool completely before we wash it. But we do still have speckles in here. It's just they're larger and a little more splotchy. It's the next morning, and before I wash our lace weight yarn, I'm gonna get a little bit of some dish soap. Oh, that was a bigger blip than I intended. I'm just gonna work it through the water 
because this agitation I'm doing now, I'm not going to have to do with the yarn in the water. I'm not anticipating any bleeding here, um, mainly because Electric Violet is a color that I use a lot, and so I'm just not expecting any issues. Now, this is very pretty and modeled and also out of focus, but that's kind of the effect that the yarn has. Oh man, I don't think it's quite what I expected when I started off on this project, but I'm also not mad at it. Okay, I'm going to carefully remove some of this liquid. And I'm gonna refill my basin. I'm being extra careful here because I know that the shadow was a shadow lace. <laughs> I know that that yarn is a little bit more delicate and grippy than say, well, the Andes or another workhorse yarn. And so I don't think we have any felting, but the strands could be a tiny bit stuck. But we will see once we're done. I do see good separation of the strands right now. I'm gently pressing, should be very careful. Um, the washing stage, I think, is the stage that is the most dangerous for felting. Uh, I've said that before, and in part because once uh, I had planned a spinning live stream with a friend, and she was going to die in some me roving, and the roving arrived very, very felted. And that's when I realized, like, oh, uh, you really can rub and wring and wring and squeeze the yarn too much during the washing stage. And so I'm trying to be as gentle as possible to get this soap out. You could avoid soap entirely if you really wanted to, but I like to do it a little bit for demonstration purposes. But I'm gonna go put this yarn through my spin dryer to help remove the rest of the liquid. That helps it dry faster. It helps the yarn also not be weighed down. Um, and so that way it dries a little bit fluffier and bouncier than if I was up there with the water, the weight of this water and the strands could stretch it a little bit. Um, if you don't have a spin dryer, which I'm assuming many of you don't, you can get a salad spinner um, and use like a salad spinner as a dedicated yarn water getting out of verb. <laughs> I do have some videos where I use the salad spinner in the fast, but the spin dryer has been such a feature of my dyeing that it is now a permanent fixture in my kitchen because I use it all the time. It's hard to remember when I lived without it. But anyway, I would say outside of dedicated dye equipment, the thing I recommend you get after that is some kind of spin dryer. The model that I use, I believe, is discontinued, and so that's the only reason why I don't have that linked in the video description along with the other tools and equipment I use. But uh, I think that um, Laundry Alternative is the brand of the one that I have. I've heard good things about Panda and maybe Ninja or some other brands I've heard other dyers talk about, but anyway, I'll see you when the yarn is dry. Going into this yarn, I had a goal to get speckles with sort of a lavender base, and you know, I'm a little torn. This isn't shadow lace or anything, I just brought over something that was a bare white, and uh, it's hard to say. I think a lot of the base here feels very white to me. There are certainly areas that are more lavender but I feel a lot of white as well, and I'm not sure if it's just my mind playing tricks on me or not. It's like if I zoom in, like in here, yes, you feel the, the speckles on the lavender. But that feels white, this feels white, and so I don't know. I don't know if it's just so little spread that the contrast makes it feel different, or if I really just didn't use enough dye. And I was concerned the more I layered the color, the more things would start to run together and that we might lose some of the appearance that feels speckly because in here we do have still speckles on sort of a pastel purple base, but there's so much less contrast, it's so soft, that I think that it's a little bit hard to show, or like a hard to see, and so it's really a balancing act because the, the brighter purple speckles are a little bit more pastel with this particular colorway. But ooh ooh, I found a pink speckle. <laughs>
This yarn is so soft and cozy. Now, is this felted? Um, I would say no. The strands are a little bit stuck to one another because it's grippy, but you can see that I can easily pull it apart using very little pressure. Um, you would be able to use a ball winder and a swift as long as things aren't going to get like tangled. It's What's come, what wasn't moving apart there wasn't from felting, it's because the strands were literally crossed. Um, and so this is something that can happen with a yarn that has a lower twist like this. Because if you take a look at these strands, you can see that the twist is low. In the past, I might have chosen to reskein yarn like this. Uh, that's what I would do with palette because I would find there that the strands would sort of clump a little bit like this after dyeing. And again, it wasn't quite felted, it just wasn't as pretty. Part of that is the nature of those fibers and a reason why shadow and palette are both really good for color work because the yarn grips to itself and therefore as you are changing colors, the stitches sort of hold themselves together really, really well. And so I guess those are things that you just need to keep in mind, um, but I'm not planning on reskating this today because sometimes even if you reskein it, the yarn is gonna clump <laughs> to itself. And so then, you know, it's like, what's the point of having reskained it? You know what could be really, really fun? This just popped into my head, but it would be really fun to take this colorway and then over dye it with gray, brown, blue, pink, some other color uh, and get sort of a semi-solid on top of this. Yes, that would reduce the contrast between these mottled speckles and the base, but that would give also some hue variation and make it, I mean, it's variegated now, um, but that could reduce some of the busyness if you were concerned about that and wanted something more saturated. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I have created so many different yarn dyeing videos that I cannot remember what I have done all the time. Now, sometimes I go and look <laughs> before I pick colors or something. Other times I don't. And so I am curious to see if I have done something similar on this yarn base in the past. <laughs> At one point, I started working to make a database of all my videos because I was like, oh, we can do like dye type technique yarn base, yarn brand, and have something so that way it would be like searchable and toggleable. So that way if you wanted to see everything I've used with Derma acid dyes or Paradise Fibers acid dyes, a, br a brand that I use sometimes but not quite as often, then you could easily toggle it, right? And I was planning on using the community to help crowdsource collecting all of this data. But then I learned that the whole database system I was planning on using would allow for a total of 500 lifetime views before I started charging like $50 a month. And that did not really seem worth it for a resource that I knew would be primarily used by me. <laughs> and so this is, in theory, something that I would like to do at some point. But I need to, I just keep keeping an eye out for different resources uh, and things that would allow me to create something like this uh, using like Google Sheets um, to make it searchable. And so, yeah, if anyone has any tips, please let me know down in the comments below because there are times like this when it would be extremely useful. If you'd like to help support all of the content here, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have a link down in the description, but my shop is filled with yarn that has been featured in my videos. And sometimes there are even pre-orders for special events that are coming up, like the Chemnitz Hanukkah yarn sampler, which at this point should be ready to ship and shipping now. Either the pre-order shipping is happening now and it'll be ready to ship really, really soon. I'm not quite sure when this video will come out, but I can update you in a pinned comment or you can always head over to Etsy and check out the listings and see if they are shipping yet because I will change from pre-order to and remove pre-order from the listing if they're shipping now. But given that, I'm 
at the time I'm filming this conclusion, I'm planning to start shipping the pre-orders uh, one week from today. I think that we're pretty good. <laughs> As I said, the links to everything are down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.